In this segment, we'll be reviewing the scales used to measure the items in the FCB grid, and we'll look at some examples of how you might apply the grid. The learning objective here is focusing on the scales, which should help you understand the basic concepts behind the grid. Recall that we have two dimensions. One is a relative dimension of thinking over feeling, and the other is involvement. The items that measure thinking are decision is not mainly logical or objective, or decision is mainly logical or objective. These items are always set up as uh, bipolar scales. And then the decision is based mainly on functional facts, or the decision is not based mainly on functional facts. The feeling items are decision expresses one's personality, or decision does not express one's personality. Decision is based on a lot of feeling, or decision is based on little feeling. And decision is based on looks, taste, touch, smell, or sound, or decision is not based on those. And you'll notice that uh, item one, which focuses on personality, may be more relevant in high involvement than item three. Item three is probably more relevant for low involvement, but could also be relevant for high involvement. And item two is probably relevant for both. For involvement, we have three items as well. Very important decision, very unimportant decision, requires a lot of thought, decision requires little thought, and you might think that that's, you know, a thinking scale. It isn't. A lot of thought really reflects effort that you put in. And then a lot to lose if you choose the wrong brand or very little to lose if you choose the wrong brand. Some things to keep in mind, the grid positions reported are averages for product categories. So you may have a product that somebody is very involved with, for example, but other people may not be. Or you may have a category where some people are really making a purchase based on feeling kind of motives and others are making purchases based on thinking motives. In fact, we can uh, actually cluster consumers or segment consumers based on level of involvement or primary motives. Also, consumers can respond to brands as well as product categories for the FCB grid. Here's an example. This is one of the Got Milk campaign ads. I love that campaign because it was so successful at repositioning milk, which had really suffered uh, massive trauma in terms of sales through the 70s and 80s uh, and even into the early 90s. Where would you think this would fall on the FCB grid? Well, milk is definitely not high involvement. Many people buy milk because they like the taste. Others buy milk because they feel it's good for them. So I could see milk falling somewhere right around the middle of quadrants three and quadrants four. This is an ad for TransOcean, which brought us the oil rig disaster in the Gulf. It's an ad that came out before that disaster. The headline is make the right move. And you can see there's quite a lot of copy here, although it's a little fuzzy, but it's talking about um, offshore drilling and the requirements and the strategy involved and the risks. And you can see that they've got little oil derricks in the picture as well. Where do you think this would fall? This is an example of B2B advertising. So it's business advertising and would appear in something like Business Week or Forbes or perhaps uh, a specialty magazine for the oil industry. In general, we would expect B2B to fall into high involvement thinking or quadrant one because in business to business, typically you're spending a lot of money on purchase decisions and they usually are made in a group. Also, you typically have to be able to justify your purchase decisions, and that requires a lot of information. What about a suit for a new grad? How would you feel about a new suit for going out on your job interviews or a new suit for your first job coming out? Where would that fall? Quadrant one, two, three, or four? Well, I think for most people, it's likely to be high involvement because it's almost certainly going to be fairly expensive. and Clothing in general, especially clothing we wear in more important situations, is likely to be uh, something that 
really uh, speaks to our self-esteem. So that's likely to be quadrant two. I love this ad. It's for a bridal store and dress. So it's a designer creating for a specific chain of stores. And we can take a look at this, very unusual. Um, where would something like a bridal dress fall on the FCB grid? We have thinking and feeling, low and high involvement. Well, this one, this one would be radically high involvement feeling. There is absolutely nothing rational about the purchase of a wedding dress. I love this ad. This is one of my all-time favorite ads. I love it because of its simplicity and the way in which it communicates with almost no words at all on the image. Where would this fall? High involvement or low involvement? I'm not personally that involved with window cleaning, so I'm guessing that most people feel the same, although that's always a dangerous assumption. But given the low cost and low risk, I think it's, it, it's an okay assumption. And where would it fall in habit formation or self-satisfaction? Again, I think uh, habit formation is more likely because it's a very functional kind of product that we're trying to get. People don't usually get self-satisfaction, or at least most people I know don't get self-satisfaction out of window cleaning. Okay, and here we have Volkswagen. I, I hope this image looks familiar to most of you. Um, it, that would be Abbey Road, and you might be able to close your eyes and imagine the Beatles there instead of these Beatles. Okay, and where would a Beetle fall on the FCB grid? Well, cars in general are going to be high involvement. Even if you've got a lot of money, a car is high involvement. And the question is, is it a thinking product or a feeling product? Cars are one of those categories where people typically have both motives. We all want a car that's going to work well, that's going to be safe, that's going to be practical for us. But most of us also want a car that looks good, that maybe says something about ourselves or communicates something about the people we are. So I would guess that most cars fall someplace around the middle, up in the high, high uh, involvement zone. Now, there would be exceptions to that. Something like a sports car is not terribly practical and probably has more to do with feeling, although there are thinking motives as well. So maybe that falls someplace halfway across um, quadrant two. Something like a family car, like a minivan, is probably not something that people base egos on. It's more likely that thinking motives are dominant there, so quadrant one. But again, maybe halfway through or closer to the middle line. Okay, no matter what you want to do in life, life takes visa. Never in sleep mode. Hmm. So where would financial products in general fall on the FCB grid? Well, that's an interesting question. I think uh, people would like to believe that it's high involvement, and it might well be. Uh, but is it thinking or is it feeling? I suspect it's primarily thinking but with some feeling elements. Uh, those feeling elements might have to do with status, which is clearly an issue for products like credit cards. Or it might have to do with feelings of risk that we take with financial products. What's this? 24-7 drive through Does that look like golden arches to you? It is.
well. What did you think of that one? Where would that be? Oh, I think that's pretty clearly quadrant two. <laughs> Wow, an ad within an ad. Okay, where would this fall on the on the FCB grid? Coca-Cola's low involvement, right? Although people have pretty strong feelings about Coca-Cola. So I think quadrant four would make sense. And that's the end of our discussion about the FCB grid. Happy marketing!